Tonight, the seven investigators talking with the victim of child genital mutilation. This as we probe the reclusive sect whose members are charged with committing similar acts. Seven investigator Jonathan Carlson is live tonight with what he's learned. Jonathan. Well, Glenda, good evening to you. The seven investigators also learning today from federal officials that the parents of children who allow this to go on could and likely will face prosecution for violating state and federal laws, regardless of religious protections. As a former victim tells us, this practice is a global problem. Days ago, a raid at the Slavonia Clinic, where federal authorities say genital mutilation was taking place on young children. Today, as I approached, a woman inside yelled for us to leave. Neighboring businesses tell me that this wasn't your traditional busy doctor's office. They would see patients coming and going at all hours of the day and night. Three people charged. The Northville doctor accused of performing female circumcisions on girls as young as seven, and the husband and wife who opened their clinic to the doctor. Friends of the clinic owner taking to the press in India in support, calling the ritual performed non-insertive and performed on each and every female member of our community. A young woman subjected to this as a child and now an advocate against the practice talking to Action News. Regardless of the extent of the cuts, they shouldn't be occurring. Just how many of these rituals have been performed on children at the Michigan Clinic is still under investigation. But there is one thing in common with the three arrested. They're part of the close-knit Indian Muslim community known as Dawoodi Bora. Members consider genital cutting to be a religious norm. During the process, the girls are instructed to remain quiet, meaning the number of victims among us might be higher than one would think. There could be. Um, I mean, it's really hard to come forward um, to talk about what happened to you. This had us looking closer at this sect and visiting its gathering place, this mosque in Farmington Hills. No one was there when we visited, no signage either, except for those instructing gender rules. Neighbors telling me members don't live openly nearby. Only occasionally do they show up to pray, mostly at night. Their website is password protected, shielding the outside from knowing much about their doings. But we've learned of another connection. Dr. Jumana Nagarwala, the doctor charged with performing the mutilation, is not only a member here, her husband is reportedly one of the mosque's leaders. Raising the question, how much did the mosque know about its members allegedly breaking U.S. law? We visited the doctor's home today to question her husband. No one was home. Now, a group rep representing that mosque did send out a statement to some media organizations late last week saying that they do instruct their members to follow U.S. law, as did a mosque in Minnesota uh, where those two young Detroit victims traveled from. So it appears the edict from the sect doesn't always get followed, guys. Back to you. Jonathan, how many children are subjected to this mutilation here in the U.S.? Half a million, that's the number from the World Health Organization that have either been affected or are expected to be. So a pretty large number, but again, a lot of those folks living in the shadows. All right, Jonathan, eye-opening, we thank you.